Hello friends. This uh, discussion will be on the cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is the most common cancer of the female. Pairing with the breast cancer, along with the breast cancer, these are the two most common cancer. One is breast cancer and another is the cervical cancer. These are the two most common cancer in the female. In the developed world, it is the breast cancer. In the developing world, like the India, it is the cervical cancer. It is the most common cancer. That's why most of the talks, most of the things are talked about the cervical cancer. Most of the development, most of the operative procedures are for the cervical cancer. Well, to discuss the topic for the prospect of the general practitioner, general gynecologist, this talk of around 30 minutes or so will be for those persons who are dealing with the females and what they should know when they are approaching for a case of cervical cancer or a suspected case of cervical cancer. Well, this cancer uh, is mostly prevalent in the underprivileged society and uh, uh, when parity is more, when there is number of child are more and uh, early age of marriage, early age of intercourse, multiple sexual partner, the partner died of the uh, some infection or the cancer related to the penis and uh, of course uh, tobacco use and most common and most important part of the causative factors for the cervical cancer is the HPV infection or the human papilloma virus infection. It has been seen and multiple times it has been proved that human papilloma virus particularly strain 6 and 11 are associated with the cervical cancer. That's why a lot of steps now are being taken for the prevention of the cervical cancer in respect to the HPV vaccine and all. That thing we will discuss later on. But for the prospect of our practice, that what are the things we should know? The, what are the risk factors? As I have told the multiple sexual partner and all, those are the risk factors and those are the group of the ladies that should be, those should be screened properly whenever there is a complaint or is a prophylactic point of view. Then what are the signs and symptoms to whom we will suspect that yes, she can be having the cervical cancer. What are the symptoms? Well, there are uh, broadly there are uh, two, uh, two categories you can say. Uh, one is early cervical cancer and another is advanced cervical cancer. In early cervical cancer, the presentation is mostly abnormal uterine bleeding. And second symptom is most consistent symptom is the foul smelling vaginal discharge. So these are the two symptoms. One is abnormal uterine bleeding and another is foul smelling vaginal discharge. Then let us discuss with the abnormal uterine bleeding. What kind of abnormal uterine bleeding may be presented, may present uh, as a symptoms of the cervical cancer? Well, postmenopausal bleeding. Anybody having the cessation of the menstruation, attended menopause, and having the uh, bleeding per vaginum, she might be having the cervical cancer. Please suspect it and examine the cervix. That is number one point. Number two, if she is having the irregular bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding, in between the two menstruations, if she is having the bleeding, then she might be having the cervical cancer. Third thing is the sometimes menorrhagic type of the bleeding. Some uh, types of the menorrhagic types of the bleeding. So these are the few uh, types of the abnormal uterine bleeding I can say summarizely. Postmenopausal bleeding in a postmenopausal lady and premenopausally particularly the intermenstrual bleeding is the most important thing and another important uh, thing in early cancer is the postcoital bleeding. If a patient is complaining that I am having bleeding PV following intercourse then she might be having some abnormality in the cervix. Please never ignore it. Because the catch is that if we detect the cervical cancer from the beginning, then it is completely curable and treatable also. So that is one point regarding the symptoms. Another uh, symptom, most important catchy symptom is the abnormal 
Regional, foul smelling, discharge. Both the, uh, all the words have some meaning. The discharge from the vagina is abnormal in quantity. It is a vaginal discharge. It is a foul smelling discharge, putrefied foul smelling discharge. And if it is a consistent discharge in the months together, in spite of treatment, it is not relieving. Please suspect that it can be a cervical cancer. So these are the two symptoms in the early cervical cancer. If the disease advances without any detection, either due to the negligence from the patient or as a practitioner we fail to detect it in the early, then she may present to us with the sometimes backache because when the disease will progress, it will involve the parametrium, then there will be backache will be there, then some neurological symptoms may be there, then if it involves to the bladder, then bladder symptoms will be there, it will involve to the bowel, the rectum, then the rectal symptoms will be there. And in very advanced cases, she will present with the metastasis. It's very unusual to be presented, uh, to have the cancer cervix in a very advanced stage. However, sometimes the patient presents to us in a very, very advanced stage, unfortunately. So those are the symptoms of us. To summarize the symptoms, one is abnormal uterine bleeding, second is foul smelling vaginal discharge, third is the pain related either to the pain to the nerves, bone or sometimes dysuria, dysgeia. So all these types. Then the fourth one is the cachexia, anemia, asthenia, anorexia, all these advanced cancer symptoms will be there. So those are the four symptoms for the cancer cervix. Then the signs of the cancer cervix. What are the signs? What uh, we will find? In the signs, I will say again, in the early cancers, uh, there are few signs and in the advanced cervical cancer, there will be few signs. In the early cervical cancer, when, when we will put the speculum, the, uh, there will be presence of growth in the cervix. That is the first thing. There will be presence of the growth in the cervix. That growth may be a cauliflower type exophytic growth or sometimes may be ulcerative growth. It is flat with the surface or sometimes very infiltrating growth, endophytic type of the growth will be there. The growth might be in the ectocervix. The ectocervix, this is the ectocervical area or the growth might be in the endocervix. The ectocervical lesions are very revealing lesions that will present with the bleedings and the discharge. But the endocervical lesions are the most need not obvious. When even if you will see in the speculum, one can miss the real endocervical lesions. So in this endocervical lesions, you will find the viral separate the, the cervix will be like this, the viral separate cervix will be there, and uh, the lesions will be inside the cervix, and we have to be very tricky to find out uh, the biopsy or the smear. If the growth is uh, in the ectocervix, then we can detect with the pers putting the pus speculum inside the vagina. So that is first thing is the presence of the growth. And the nature of the growth has to be defined and the size of the growth has to be mentioned. Then what is the nature of the growth? The nature of the growth will be, it is uh, the blitz on touch. The growth will blitz in touch. The moment you will touch the mass, it will bleed. Because of the presence of the neoangiogenesis, a very friable mass, presence of the nature of the cancer cells, it will bleed on touch. That is the first sign. Second sign will be the friable. The moment you will hold the tissue, the tissue will come out. So, friability is another cardinal sign. So these two things are very cardinal signs. One is blitz in touch and the friability of the tissue. Then once uh, the growth will invade to the, this is the side pelvic wall. So this is uh, the side pelvic wall and this is the cervix. 
once this growth will involve and it will involve this area which is called the parametrium the area between the cervix and the pelvis is called the parametrium and once this will start involving this area this area this area then it may extend to the vagina this way up to one third upper upper half of the vagina or it may extend to the down of the vagina so the growth may extend downward or the growth may extend upward in, into the uterine cavity or the growth may extend in the lateral direction to the parametrium so the we are talking about the signs one is the glitz and touch and second is the friability third thing is the induration when you do the pelvic anal examination or for rectal examination you will find induration induration means there is some sorts of a tough feeling of the tissue will be there so that is called the induration then if the growth or the cancer advances then another signs will appear that is the fixity So the tissue will be fixed once this growth will go on, go on. Then the tissue will be fixed to the pelvic wall. It will drag the cervix to towards the pelvic wall. It will be fixed to the bladder. It will be fixed to the rectum. It will be fixed to the side wall. So there will be fixity of this tissue will be there once it advances. So those are the four signs. One is blitz and touch, friability. the fixity and the induration so that the four cardinal signs of the cancer cervix so the catch is that whenever we we'll suspect a case of cancer cervix please please put the speculum into the vagina once you are looking to the growth never ignore that growth we must go for the diagnosis next in uh, next step is the investigation part we must go for that that is for sure then uh, what are the investigations uh, uh, we will do in the investigations for the mass for the mass uh, yeah. so in the investigations first investigations is the what is called the pap smear we can go for the lvc these are the five investigations so you have to be very clear one is pap smear another is lbc or the liquid based cytology third thing is the biopsy fourth is the hpv testing and the colposcopy so what is pap smear pap smear is basically it goes by the name of the papericula it basically is looking to the cells under the microscope what do we do put the speculum take the swipe the uh, around the cervix by the spatula available or the cytoplas available then prepare a slide a very thin slide and fix the slide there are methods are available i am not going into the detail so that slide will be inspected under the microscope what is the purpose the purpose is to detect any abnormal cells what is that abnormal cells if the features of the malignancy is there or not in that cells what we have taken the sample so that is the whole purpose of the pap smear so this is basically almost a screening test and uh, we can easily take it and we can easily get the report but there are a lot of fallacies making the slides and preparing the smear preparing a very good smear so that the cells can be delineated by the pathologist 
That's why the LBC is another method, the liquid based cytology. You take the smear from the cervix you are suspecting, then put that uh, all the brush into a liquid uh, container provided by the company, then you send this container, the liquid and the brush all together to the laboratory and they will prepare the slide out of this from the centrifuge uh, materials and that will be a very clear background and the, all the cells can be delineated very easily. That is the plus point for the LBC. But the cost factor is one thing, another thing is the availability. However, LBC is very good in comparison to the pulse smear. Then regarding biopsy, when we will do the biopsy? Once we uh, do the smear, if we suspect that there is a growth, if there is suspicious of the growth, if it is an obvious growth, then definitely biopsy is to be taken. If it is a growth, then take the punch biopsy. There are different methods of the biopsy, but the most commonly what we practice is the punch biopsy. There is a punch biopsy per se is there. Once we can take the punch biopsy, this is the tissue to be sent to the laboratory with the formalin mixed normal saline that is uh, the uh, uh, in that we have to send the tissue to the laboratory either we can take the punch biopsy, the cone biopsy, wedge biopsy or uh, um, uh, whatever method the whole purpose is to take out the tissue that is one thing. Then uh, where, where we will do the HPV infection and HPV investigations? Human papilloma virus investigations or testing. Well, this is uh, this has come in a big way now. When there is suspicion of the pap smear will be there. In that case, we can go for the HPV testing. If there is combination of the pap smear abnormality and HPV testing, we can sub subject the patient to the colposcopic test. What is a colposcopy? Colposcopy is a magnification, magnified vision of the cervix. We look to the different blood vessels of the cervix. We look to the natures of the cells distributions, and there are different criteria that are there. We'll examine the cervix under the magnified microscope we can visualize in the uh, videographic way and uh, there are different uh, factors are there we will analyze from that and accordingly we will interpret that it is an abnormal colposcopic finding or a normal col colposcopic finding so once uh, as a general practitioner our job is to put the speculum into the subject once i once again i'm telling if anything abnormal looking then please take the smear, send it for the testing. And if there is obvious growth is there, take a biopsy and uh, send to the laboratory. If it is, it can be done at that point, it's okay. Otherwise, send the patient to the consultant for the early consultation. That is the first message what I want to ventilate. So those are the investigations to diagnose the case. So, if you are suspecting, go for either of these two tests, pap smear or LBC, then biopsy for the confirmation whether it is a cancer or not. <clears throat> With the report, it came out to be a cancer, a cervical cancer. Then what we will do? Fortunately, the cervical cancer is one cancer which is 100% treatable. We have seen patients getting cured and they are, they are living a healthy life for last 20 or more than 20 years even. So this cancer should not be neglected. The lot of myths are there in the society. Once cancer is there, death will be there. No. The cervical cancer is a very sensitive cancer. 
which can be treated at early stage if the different modalities of the treatments are there. So, once it is diagnosed, what are the baskets of the treatment that we can offer? If it is an early cancer, there are few stages of the disease. For the clinicians, for the, there are different stages are there. Stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. Stage 1 is the early cancer and 2A is also the early cancer. So let us discuss what are the modalities of the treatment. One is surgery. Radiotherapy, surgery. Surgery, the role of surgery is uh, there if it is detected in a very early stage. We can say stage 1 and maximum 2A. What the practice is, the guideline of the practice is that whatever may be the modality of the treatment, it should be a monomodal therapy. I mean to say, whatever the modality of the treatment we will choose, it should be a single model of single model therapy. If we are choosing for the surgery, if that case is qualifying for the surgery, then it should be only surgery. If it is not fit for the surgery, then they should go for the radiotherapy or combination with the chemotherapy. That is the whole concept. So where we will do the surgery? If the cancer is a, it's confined to the cervix. That is the stage one. It has many subdivisions: one A, one B, B one. All these things for the oncogynecologist. So, up to one B one, B S B one, two and three. So, up to stage one A, it is clear that surgery is beneficial. 1B1 that is when the lesion or the growth is up to 2 cm size then it is also beneficial that surgery is beneficial. B2 in the new classification within 2 to 4 cm while well, that is an equivocal zone we may or we may not do and we have to go for this uh, uh, radiological uh, assessment of the growth that is the MRI of the pelvis to assess the parametrium and if we find that this case is fit for the surgery then we may go in the V2 when the growth size is 2 to 4 cm. Beyond 4 cm growth we should not go for the operation because a lot of research, lot of papers are published and it has been seen from the clinical experience also from us that if you are going for a large lesion, more than 4 cm lesions, it is usually associated with the association with the enlarged lymph nodes or the metastatic lymph nodes. So, whole the idea of doing surgery gets spoiled once the lymph node comes positive or some advanced cancer is there and we have to avoid the surgery uh, midway. So, our clear question is. That's why for even the gynecologist who are practicing, it's up to 2 cm it's a clear cut guideline. 2 to 4 cm we may go for the surgery, but beyond, beyond 4 cm we should not go for the surgery. The modality of the treatment is radiotherapy. Now another grey zone is 2A, that is uh, the involvement of the upper vagina. If there will be involvement of the upper vagina is there, then we have to assess it carefully that if the growth is up to that, whether we can approach beyond 2 cm of the growth or not. Because after operation, if the vaginal margin will come positive, 
then again the whole the surgery surgical approach intention will be spoiled so that is the whole concept so in the surgery we are mostly interested for the three factors one is the vaginal margin should be free of malignancy number 2 is that the parametrium should be free of cancer number 3 is that lymph nodes pelvic lymph nodes that will retrieve should be free of metastatic carcinoma if that is achieved and plus this normal in belgium this is not a surgeon sent but these two factors particularly are at the surgeon sent this is cervix this is the growth and this is the pelvis if i am a surgeon then my surgical ability is proved if i can take the vaginal margin up to certain length that this vaginal margin will come negative for the cans then it is satisfactory surgery this is the parametrium if i will take the parametrium in such a way that the parametrium will be free of cancer then the surgery is satisfactory these two factors determines the surgical ability of the surgeon who is doing the surgery for the cancer cervix that is the warden operation traditionally what we speak lymph nodes we should assess it prior to the surgery by the ct scan or the mri and uh, even the, the new gadgets are available that is for the onco gynecologist or the gynecologist who are practicing the icg camera and all are coming by that also we can assess the lymph nodes during the operation we can send for the progen biopsy and we can have also take the intraoperative discussion those are not for the general discussions then the stromal in vaginal if this is the cervix how much depth the cancer is embedded if it is if it is embedded more than 50% then only uh, probably we have to go for the adjuvant therapy so that is for the surgical point of view in, in general point of view, in general so the message uh, to my friends who are uh, operating particularly the cancer cervix is that we must assess the patient before taking the surgery assessment should be there are few types of assessment as far as the malignancy is concerned assessment from the general fitment or general fitness of the patient whether the patient is fit for the surgery or not if she is 75 years lady and a very frail lady with the cancer cervix very early stage she may not fit for the surgery so that case is not for the surgery so if associated the uh, complaints are there the associated symptoms are there we should think that we should not uh, take up for the surgery because there are certain other modalities are available for us then second is related to the disease whether the disease is in the early stage or not otherwise just to prove ourselves that we can do a wardrobe operation has no meaning at all because you are just delaying the case for the radiotherapy and uh, honestly speaking a benign case is or a benign surgeon is that a case of abnormal uterine bleeding once we do the hysterectomy the game is over the story ends there but for the malignancy from the operation only the story begins from the operation then follow up then continuous follow up recurrence and all these things will continue so that's why dear friends we must assess the patient prior to the surgery so if it is operable only then we should operate and we should operate in proper way 
there are different methods in other uh, video uh, probably I will speak on how to operate into or the hysterectomy or the steps of radical hysterectomy. So that is uh, the surgery. Then the radiotherapy. If the cancer is advanced one, as I, have, as I was discussing, more than 1v2, if the growth is more than 4 cm or it has uh, invaded the uh, to the side wall, if there is invasion to the side wall, that is stage 3 disease or the stage 4 disease, metastatic disease, then we will go for the other modality of the therapy other than the surgery. Radiotherapy is the best modality of the therapy if it is an advanced cancer. We should not go for the surgery. Because you will do the surgery, again radiotherapy will be there. So it has no meaning. So once you will put the radiotherapy, what are the radiotherapy available? Types of radiotherapy. There are one method of radiotherapy that is given from the outside that is called the teletherapy. And another method of the radiotherapy or radiation therapy is called the brachytherapy, which is given intravaginally, where the intravaginal radiation uh, source are given to place and from there the radiation is exposed. So the teletherapy and the brachytherapy. This is given fast and this is given the 25 fractions of the 25 settings are given 5 days a week for 5 weeks. 5 days a week for 5 weeks. This is given almost 5 minutes you can say. So 25 fractions are given. And uh, regarding teletherapy I can say there will be some minor side effects will be there. But that doesn't use to be much major side effects. So there is a myth that if we take the radiotherapy then the patient will die or there will be some complications all these things will be there but uh, during the radiotherapy there will be some minor compl complaint will be there otherwise it is a very uneventful one can go for so that is uh, for the general knowledge i am commenting that the teletherapy is given first then the brachytherapy this brachytherapy is given in a three fraction or three setting you can see Only three settings of the brachytherapy is given after the teletherapy is completed. So these are the two therapies. Sometimes, period, so small chemotherapy is given. Then the other modality is the chemotherapy, where the chemotherapy is given. As I have told, during the time of the radiotherapy, small doses of the chemotherapy are given and that causes very minor side effect. The cisplatin in very low dose is given. And chemotherapy is also given for the very advanced cancer. When there will be metastasis from the cervix to the lungs or somewhere, brain or, or bone, all these things will be there. It is disseminated to the other parts of the body. Then the chemotherapy is the modality of the treatment. So in that case, the chemotherapy is given. Then what is this advanced therapy or the targeted therapy? These are new molecule of the treatment under experimentation and these are given for the advanced cases, for the recurrence cases, once the cancer recurs, then we can also use the targeted therapy, but these are very reserved treatments that is not very frequently used. And after the treatment, this is the baskets of the treatment available. To summarize, in the early cancer, the surgery is offered. In the advanced cancer, the radiotherapy is offered. And in very advanced cancer, the chemotherapy is offered. And in the recurrence cases, the targeted therapy may be offered. Then, the most important part is the follow -up. We should not leave the patient after the treatment. 
we should at least you should follow it at least for five years we should call her we should look for there is a presence of disease or any appearance of the disease in the vagina or the cervix by the upper speculum examination by the sonographic examination intermittently we can do the ct scan examination also and uh, we should follow the patient so that we can pick up the disease if there is a recurrence so my dear friends to summarize the cervical cancer just in few words that it is a very common cancer in uh, females we should be very much aware of the fact that if somebody is complaining of postmenopausal bleeding or abnormal uterine bleeding in the form of the intermenstrual bleeding or any abnormal foul smelling discharge please examine her by the perspectrum examination if there is any abnormality in the cervix take a pap smear if there is any growth is there then take a biopsy and if there is proven cancer is there then please refer to the consultant for the higher consultation and if it is very early case then we will go for the operation uh, if it is an advanced case the radiotherapy and if it is a very advanced case then the chemotherapy and these are the patients that should be follow up properly and one thing is that myth is the biggest enemy for the cervical cancer in society even in the uh, very educated people also the myth is that the cancer means that it is not that cervical cancer is one cancer which is completely curable and this should be treated without any second thought and on march 8 which is the women's day world women's day in india throughout pan india you can say we are going to screen the females or uh, particularly the related to the service of the police on march 8th of the 2020 thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching this video thank you all